Hi everyone, my name is Angela Boldini, I'm a cognitive scientist and in this video we are going to look at what working memory is. Let's have a look, okay? Short-term memory and working memory are two concepts that often get confused. They are often considered as the same thing, but technically speaking, speaking they are not exactly the same. So what is working memory? If I had to put it simply, I would say that working memory is like short-term memory with the ability to elaborate data. But let's clarify this point better. The term working memory refers to a brain system that provides temporary store, storage and manipulation of the information necessary for such complex co cognitive tasks as language comprehension, learning and reasoning. Working memory has been found to require the simultaneous storage and processing of information. These are words of Professor Alan Badley, who is considered like the father of working memory. But let's have a look at a few examples on this. Here we have our Mr. Red again, telling his phone number or telling a digit of string, a string of digits to Mr. Green. As we said in our previous video, Mr. Green using his short-term memory will repeat the number with his inner speech to remember each digit in the right order until he finds a way to take a note of it. But there's a new task now for Mr. Green. Will he be able to say the number backwards? Here is the number again. Try if you want. Three, 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 one, two, two, six, nine, eight, four. Can you do it? It's not easy at all. Okay, here is the solution. And this is a typical working memory task because one needs not only to maintain information active in their brain, but also has to elaborate it somehow. And that's why this second task is much more difficult because now we have to keep the data in our short-term memory, which is already difficult enough, and we have to pick them in the reverse order. Would it be easier to retrieve in reverse order our phone number, assuming that one knows his or her phone number? Yes, it would be, would be easier. Why? Exactly because we know our phone number. It's in our long-term memory, so we don't have to keep reversing it in our short-term memory to prevent his forgetting. Our phone number is a solid piece of information in our long-term memory. So it's not too difficult to keep it in mind and say it backwards. But an unknown digit string is very fragile and has to be continuously rehearsed to be remembered. Of course, the same principles apply to visual spatial stimuli. Remember our visual spatial short-term memory task that in that case, we just had to remember the sequence of dots in the right order. And that was one, two, three, and four. A visual spatial working memory task would be, for example, to remember the four positions in reverse order. So in this case, it would be one, two, three, and four. Or we could ask the other person to indicate the locations where the red dots didn't appear. These would be relatively easy tasks anyway, as we only have to remember four positions on a three by three matrix. But what happens if we have the same task on a six by six matrix and we have six positions to remember? Say, for example, we have this series of red squares. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And we have to repeat the sequence backwards. Not easy, is it? These are all apparently trivial examples, I know, but they are helpful to remember to then better understand the effort required in order 
different tasks, like these, for example, mental calculation. What does making this multiplication imply at a cognitive level? It implies retrieving the concepts of 26 and 15 from our long-term memory, for example, the concept of multiplication, how you do it, what's the procedure to multiply one number by another one. And then we need to keep in our short-term memory partial results as we do it, and then calculate the final result. Of course, this is a relatively easy task for us now, but let's imagine a nine or 10 years old kid. It's more difficult for them. Why? Because first of all, their working memory has not entirely developed at that age. Then their skills and knowledge are not very robust yet. And as we saw earlier, it's much more difficult to elaborate fragile data, fragile procedures in our mind and robust data already consolidated in our long-term memory. Language translation. Again, say someone tells me a sentence in Italian, which is obviously my native language, asking me to translate it into English or into another language for that matter. What do I need to do in that case? I need to remember the original sentence in my short-term memory, think of the appropriate words to use in English, and combine the English words according to the English grammar rules, which, of course, I have to remember. Lots of work for my working memory, especially if I'm still a beginner in English or whatever second language I might be learning. That's why, and as I always say, simultaneous translators are like Iron Man in working memory terms. They really are. Okay, I leave it there for now. In this video, we look at some examples of working memory tasks. And as usual, I invite you now to make a brief mental recap of everything we said so that you can start consolidated or consolidating all the new information that your brain just registered. Take some notes if you want. And only once you have finished doing this, replay this video if you need to, to get some feedback. Okay, so I leave it there and I'll see you in the next video.